The National Academy of Engineering proposed 14 grand challenges for engineering in the 21st century. Foremost among the challenges is to make solar energy more economical. Solar energy is an important kind of renewable and clean energy, but currently provides less than 1% of the world's total energy. In order to tap into its potential and provide more, engineers need to work with non-engineers to increase the efficiency of solar cells while maintaining a low manufacturing cost. There are three major engineering disciplines associated with solar energy, materials, mechanical, and electrical engineering. Materials engineering is a discipline that develops processes and tests materials utilized in the solar industry. This also involves creating composites, which integrate other materials to synthesize new ones specific to photovoltaic cells. Electrical engineering is the key discipline for solar energy. From solar panels, wiring systems, inverters, to other supporting devices, every electric circuitry aspect of solar energy is handled by electrical engineers. Mechanical engineering is used to handle the physical devices and widgets employed in capturing and transferring electricity generated by solar energy. The components of the installation and maintenance of a solar energy system is developed, researched, designed, and manufactured by mechanical engineers. In order to increase the efficiency of the solar panels, it is vital to have a material of high purity. Charges should travel a short distance through a thin layer of material. However, thin layers lead to a lower absorption level of sunlight, and therefore a lower efficiency. To tackle this problem, material engineers look for a new material like perovskite in 2012 or they seek a new method of alignment between two different materials by varying the thickness and dimension to maximize the absorption level. This requires increased interaction between materials and mechanical engineers. Knowledge of economics must be applied in order to deal with the high cost of producing solar energy. In Europe, when the cost of producing solar energy is higher than the net price, the feed-in tariff is commonly used, and when it is lower, the net metering and self-consumption policies are used instead. The net metering policy is widely applied in the United States as well. Includes renewable portfolio standard, mandatory market share, and renewables obligation and quotas, all of which occur when customers or suppliers have to pay for part of the electricity produced by renewable resources. The second, centralized bidding or tendering, occurs when the government organizes the project. And the third, investment tax credits, occurs when the invested cooperations reduce their tax. Economists have to cooperate with the engineers and know about the exact methods and detailed cost of the project, then determine the most efficient solution for the project and find the optimum amount. Another major hindrance to economic feasibility of solar energy is the need for mass storage. Currently, it is difficult to say that there is a viable way of storing electricity generated by solar energy in a power grid scale. This limits the extent to which solar energy can be used widely across households and offices. To overcome such a hurdle, engineers have attempted to adopt the biological mechanism of sun rays by photosynthesis in plants. Like photosynthesis, electrolysis of water is powered by sunlight, producing hydrogen as a fuel. To increase the efficiency in electrolysis, new catalysts must be engineered. Last but not least, during the production and application of solar energy, some procedures may lead to pollution. For example, when producing the cells, chemicals including hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen chloride, isopropanol, hydrogen peroxide, and ammonia will be used, and the gas produced will cause pollution as well. When the electricity is put into use, transformers and inverters may cause significant noise pollution. On top of that, the cadmium telluride thin film battery industry is one of the most mature and most efficient amorphous silicon thin film battery industries. However, the cadmium element and its compounds bring significant damage to human beings and animals through breathing and to the environment through the waste liquid. As a result, cadmium telluride thin film batteries need to be recycled properly. With the cooperation of engineers, chemists, and environmental scientists, solar energy can be produced and applied without harming society and to make solar energy more economical.